Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am okay, Brian. Here we are. It's the big Pegasus Pegasus show. Yeah, Pegasus World Cup. Hey, say what you will. The Pegasus may not have uh, reached its lofty ambitions from five, six years ago, whatever that was. But uh, hey, it is a pretty nice car. A lot of big fields, seven graded stakes, nearly six million dollars on the line. Matt. So I'm excited about this car. I'm ready to dig in. Are you? Yeah, we got uh 24 horses to talk about. Also eligible is Matt. I count 27. Let's get going. Pegasus World Cup, mile and an eighth, of course, at Gulfstream Park, $3 million. Matt, we don't have any world beaters in here. It remains to be seen if we might have someday an older male champion. But right now, none of these horses are really there yet. But what we do have is a pretty interesting race with a pretty interesting pace dynamic. And I think a lot of potential winners. I agree. I think there's very few that we can eliminate. We uh, this is one race where you have to 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 consider the post position draw with this mile and an eight, mile and an eighth race uh, starting very very close to the first turn. Those out, outside posts uh, are in trouble. Yeah, and that could include even the favorite. Uh, number seven, National Treasure, and the second choice, number eight, First Mission. Even there, from the seven and eight pole going into that quick first turn, there could be some uh, interesting uh, uh, games play going into the first turn with some speedy favorites. Let's start from the rail, though, Matt. N uh, Nimitz Class is a horse who won a pretty good race at Parks. Parks is where he's from. He beat Gunite on an off-track uh, a few races back, but I, I tell you what, it's hard to see him beating an entire field like this. Yeah, that's for sure. But what a what what a nice horse, Brian! Eleven victories from twenty one starts. That includes many many stakes wins in the uh, in the mid mid Atlantic region. And it's really interesting that this five year old is changing barns right now <laughs> for the first time uh, with uh, uh, all of the success that he's had going out for now for George Weaver. Yeah, George Weaver has him down there for the Pegasus. I wonder if that will be a temporary thing or if George Weaver will keep him. But a nice horse coming from Parks. I just don't like him in this spot too much. Number two, I do like in this spot. Number two is O'Connor, a Chilean bred, a seven-year-old for Safi Joseph. Paco Lopez will be in the Irons mat. And O'Connor, after a... Uh, maybe slightly disappointing start to his American career after coming from South America. He's starting to put it all together, I think. Yeah, I agree. I think he's in the best form that he has been in since he came to it Amer came to America after winning nine times in Chile. Uh, he has two wins in a row now. He won the Harlan's Holiday uh, and he won the Fayette at Churchill Downs. Yeah, I, I, and I love the way you say Chile. That's that's just, uh, that's really nice, Matt. Well done there. O'Connor can come from off the pace. Some of his better races, he's been a little bit closer. Some races, he's been a little farther out, but he certainly likes to rally. Two nice graded stakes wins in a row where he wore them down and got up. He also seems to like Gulfstream Park. Number three, Dynamic One. Welcome back, Dynamic One. Todd Pletcher, I ride Ortiz, the six-year-old son of Union Rags. There's some back class, Matt, there. Uh, he may have never quite lived up to what we thought he could be. He almost won the Wood Memorial almost three years ago. He did win the Suburban uh, two years ago, uh, long layoff, and he just came back recently. Yeah, and uh, that back class that I think you're talking about uh, certainly includes that uh, Suburban victory, a grade two winner. Uh, that was back in 2022, Brian. He's been off for uh, about 15 months coming back for Todd Pletcher. Yeah, an interesting horse if he's at his best. He won the Blame, a uh, nice addition of the Blame at Churchill Downs as well uh, back in 2022. 15 months off, as you say, and he really didn't show much in his first race back. It'd be interesting, Pletcher, I read, if he pops up, hard to pick him out in this field, but can't completely 
throw them out. You can't completely throw out the four. Hoist the gold. It's been a nice horse who's competed in a lot of graded stakes. More uh, one turn than two turns. He's coming off his biggest win of his career when he won the uh, Cigar Mile on a muddy track, and he won nicely. Yeah, this is uh, one of the horses that I think is going to be uh, uh, influencing the pace and one of the horses that uh, is making this a race where there's probably going to be a, be fast early fractions. One of four millionaires in this field, but he kind of really is a sprinter. Oh, I don't know if I would call him a sprinter, but yeah, yeah, I think I think seven furlongs a mile might be better than nine furlongs. Nine furlongs at Gulfstream Park is probably a distance I would think he could get under the uh, right circumstances, Matt. But yeah, there's that time form U.S. pace projector you were talking about uh, with a lot of speed in here. He's actually the projected leader. I'm not quite sure that he will be, but he very well could be. But there's a lot of horses. I count six horses pretty darn close to the pace and maybe maybe even a seventh, although I wouldn't expect the 10 ear Il Miracola to be as quite as close as they have here on the time form US. But we see Hoist the Gold, we see National Treasure, we see First Mission, we see Grand Aspen, Skippy Longstocking, even Trademark, all wanting to be pretty close to that pace. So you see the red button map. That that tells us something about the expected early pace into that first turn. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And and uh, with that, uh, we even have one horse uh, that we're going to get to shortly uh, that is such a deep closer. He doesn't even make it onto the graphic. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and he's a horse that I've liked uh, a little bit over the time. Trademark is a horse I, I never knew what to do with, Matt. Uh, he seems like when I think he's ready to break through, he doesn't, like two races back when he was seventh in the Fayette. But then he bounced right back. And he won the Clark. Granted, it was at his favorite track at Churchill Downs, but trademark, throw out that they had trademark has actually run a bunch of good races for a trainer, Vicky Oliver. Yeah, and, and uh, he bounced back in that Clark with a nose victory over First Mission, who is in this field and, and is going to be one of the favorites. Yeah, trademark is kind of a tricky horse to, to gauge, I think, the five-year-old son of Upstart. On his best, you certainly have to give him a shot. I, I do wonder if Churchill Downs is really his best service and his do as well here at Gulfstream Park. But certainly a horse you can't you can't discount here. And he's uh, 15 to 1 on the morning line, 20 to 1 on the morning line. Senor Buscador, he's a pretty classy horse to be 20 to 1 on the morning line, Mr. Pick 5 King. Yeah, uh, uh, Todd Fincher is the trainer and he was second in that cigar mile that we referenced uh, earlier and uh, not too many races back won the San Diego handicap uh, when he's good he's good uh, deep closer 20 to one on the morning line question mark question mark uh, uh, I don't know for me uh, 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 senior Buscador is a horse that uh, I've got to look at others I, I, I've picked him before without much success yeah he's a horse that i'm kind of thinking about underneath in the exotics uh, a horse i've always liked the horse who's classy i do like him a little bit better on a mile than nine furlongs but nine furlongs with a lot of speed could set things up for a pretty classy horse who's 20 to 1 on the morning line there's a lot of betting uh possibilities here matt and that brings us to the super screener i want to say this real quick my buddy mike shuddy has done an absolutely wonderful job with the super screener for over a decade. He, he really crunches the data, if you will. And uh, he's got some big races coming up, starting with the, this Gulfstream card. So if you're looking to uh, uh, throw out some favorites that probably won't run big and throw in some long shots, Shuddy does a really good job of uh, uh, picking them out on super screener. Yeah, and Super Screener also gives you uh, plenty of wagering suggestions, uh, whether you're interested in multi-race wagers or uh, or trifectas or whatever. Uh, uh, it's a time-proven handicapping tool. Yeah, and, and Shuddy's on the Derby Trail right after this Pegasus, all the way up to the Kentucky Derby and through the Triple Crown. So if you haven't yet checked out the Super Screener, do it. Both Matt and I recommend it highly 
let's get back to the Pegasus map, the Seven Horses National Treasure. I wrote an article a few weeks ago saying that National Treasure would be the horse to beat in the Pegasus. But then this field came up with a lot of speed, a big field. Uh, then I saw the morning line at nine to five. Maybe he's the most likely winner, but I tell you what, with a lot of other speed in the race, I think he's better when he gets to the lead like he did in the Preakness, like he did in the Bre uh, Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. I don't know if he gets to the lead in here, and it's a tough spot for a 9-to-5 morning line favorite. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, Brian, uh, with this one. Uh, when I was handicapping and looking carefully at uh, National Treasures' uh, uh, past performances, it really jumped off the page at me that uh, his best races, and that includes his win in the Preakness, and his second in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile behind likely horse of the year, Cody's Wish, happened when he gets to the lead fairly soon in the race. In a handful of races where that did not happen, he could not finish better than third. Now, that may just be coincidental, but um, when we're talking about a horse that's night five on the morning line, uh, I took note. Yeah, I took note as well, Matt. And he certainly could get to the lead here. And he could be very tough to beat on the lead. But what both Matt and I are saying is he's a vulnerable favorite. And if he's 9 to 5, a clear favorite like he is on the morning line, yeah, I, I'm I'm rethinking what I wrote. Uh, it was like three weeks ago when I said he's the horse to beat. Thought we might have a little bit easier pace in this Pegasus World Cup. Number 8 is a horse who likes to be close to the lead but doesn't need the lead. His name is First Mission, Matt, and First Mission has a ton of potential still, a four-year-old son of street sense. Yeah, I think that's important to point out about First Mission. Four-year-old, lightly raced, last time was second in the Clark by a nose, won an allowance. Going back last year onto the Derby Trail, he was an impressive winner of the Lexington, had some physical problems here and there. But he's back, and and maybe you can say that about first mission and not too many others in this field uh, being lately raced. He's got some upside and maybe has more chance to step forward. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said. Uh, on the other hand, first mission, there's no single race yet in his form where I say, oh, he's going to win the Pegasus. But on the other hand, he's had five races, and they've all been good. And that win in the Lexington was a nice win early in his career. Came back with two good races last fall. Just missed, as you said, in the Clark. Uh, he needs to take a step forward, I think, to win this. I, I, I do like the fact that he can pass horses in the stretch and that he's a game horse. National Treasure is a game horse. First Mission is a game horse and proven to pass horses. Uh, but First Mission will have to keep moving forward. It certainly looks like he very well could, trained by Brad Cox, who just... Uh, unveiled Saudi crown last week for a big uh, four-year-old debut win. So first mission, definitely a horse to watch in here. Number nine, Grant Aspen, maybe five-year-olds on a dialed in. Maybe we haven't seen the best out of him yet, not either. I guess could be. One of three entered in this Pegasus field by Todd Pletcher last time was second, just beaten by a neck in the Harlan's Holiday that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Grand Aspen is certainly getting better, running the best of his career. But I, I still see, I still think I need to see more. That win two starts ago was against uh, non-winners of one. Other than last time, O'Connor ran him down. I don't see why O'Connor doesn't run him down again here. And looking at the morning line again, maybe I'm paying too much attention to the morning line. There are a lot of classy horses that are above him in the morning line. I don't like that eight to one on Grand Aspen here in the Pegasus World Cup. Number ten. There's another horse I like the morning line odds of. Il Miracola has been knocking on the door 20 to 1 on the morning line. Yeah, knocking on the door often enough uh, 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 with a lot of good finishes recently. Third in the Clark, second by a head in the Fayette, third in the Pennsylvania Derby and became a grade three winner prepping for that Pennsylvania Derby one he, when he won the Parks edition of the Smarty Jones. Yeah, that's right. Uh, grade three win, four starts back for the now four-year-old son of Gunrunner. And then the races you mentioned, third in the Penn Derby, second by a head in the Fayette, third in the Clark as a long shot to throw in the exotics. 
uh, an interesting horse. He's uh, stabled at Gulfstream Park uh, for uh, for Antonio Sano and a, a horse you can easily throw in at 20 to 1. Maybe you could say the same about the next horse, Matt Krupe. Frankie Dittori hops on this Todd Plancher trained four-year-old. Krupe is starting to uh, turn things around. I, I thought the Sonic Curlin had potential early on in his career. He never really proved it. Things are starting to go Krupe's way of late. Yeah, it took a long time for uh, uh, Krupe to, to get it together. But, you know, it took him eight tries to break his maiden. But he he was running in some very good maiden races there. He, he, he threw in a couple of starts on the Kentucky Derby Trail in there uh, um, and, and finally broke his maiden. He ran in that Pennsylvania Derby but uh, got off to a really, really rough start uh, and was able to rally from last to get to fifth in there and then has won two stakes at Aqueduct. Yeah, the, the wins in the Discovery and the Queens County do not mean that he's good enough to win the Pegasus. But on the other hand, Krupe keeps improving. Yeah, he ran in a bunch of great stakes while he was still a maiden. Uh, always well liked this son of Curlin. Is he good enough? He should get a pace he likes. Another horse maybe for the exotics. Number 12, parked way outside with some speed. Skippy Longstocking. I don't like the post position. I like the horse. Skippy Longstocking has run a lot of good races of late, Matt. Five-year-old son of exaggerated. Yeah, have to agree about the pace, uh, about the post position for Skippy Longstocking. Uh, likes to be close to the pace. Doesn't have to be on the lead. But, uh, boy, it's going to be tough from him from the 12 hole to not be far behind uh, after they straighten out. Yeah, and he likes to generally be a little closer. Last three races, just missed in the Cornhusker, won the Charlestown Classic easy, and ran a very good third in the Breezy Dirt Mile. The one also eligible in this race, Matt, is Castle Chaos. I think he would be a, uh, a horse I can't really consider too much in this field. All right, that is the big field for the Pegasus World Cup. Matt, let's go to the turf. We're going to go a little bit faster on this turf race here, Matt. Let me, uh, yeah, we're going to pull up the field for the Pegasus World Cup, which is also uh, nine furlongs. This, of course, on the grass, and it's $1 million. Let's take a look at the field real quick, Matt. Atone was the winner of this race last year. He hasn't won since. 20 to 1 on the morning line on last year's winner. Yeah, certainly is not in the form that he was heading into the Pegasus turf where he got that victory as a recent third place allowance at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, he's a horse I could see possibly popping up, but I don't like him enough to bet him, having said that. Number two is a, a real hard-hitting New York red mat. If you haven't been following Jerry the Nipper the last couple of years, he's run a ton of good races mostly against New York Brits, but a lot of stakes races. Last time he found a world of trouble and was only beaten a half length in the Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, uh, like a tone, a seven-year-old now. Uh, um, I guess it was that that uh, rough trip in the third place performance in the Fort Lauderdale that uh, prompted the connections to take a shot in this uh, Pegasus turf. Yeah, and we knew integration was taking a shot, Matt. Is he the next big American turf horse? The Sun Equality Road now four has looked like it in his first three starts for Shug McGay. The first two actually came in Virginia, Colonial Downs. Uh, but uh, last time in New York, uh, integration just looks like a horse that could be any kind. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Lightly raced, big upside uh, in this field of horses that we've seen lots of times. Yeah, integration uh, won the Virginia Derby in his second career start. That's saying something. And then last time, five-length win in the Hill Prince at New York. So integration likes to come from off the pace and a very talented horse for Chuck McGahee. Number four is a horse he beat last time in the Hill Prince. Chad Brown has I'm Very Busy, a son of cloud computing in here. Yeah, a good, uh, a, a nice turf horse for Chad. We're used to uh, uh, his success on the turf uh, Chad Brown, uh, um, yeah, uh, second in that Hill Prince is an allowance winner last year, um, was second in the Pilgrim. Yeah, second last time in the Hill Prince, but five lengths, integration blew its doors off in the stretch. I, I just don't see how uh, I'm very busy is likely to turn that around. 
Let's get to some long shots that are very interesting. Number five, Web Slinger. What, what a nice horse Web Slinger is, Matt. Uh, he ran in nine races as a three-year-old last year. He was in the money in eight of them. Two nice stakes wins here, here in Kentucky and a bunch of very good performances even when he didn't win. Yeah, and most recently, he's he's a deep closer. Uh, he's going to be running late. Uh, he was uh, out in California where he had two really nice second-place finishes in the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby and in the Grade 2 Twilight Derby. But it has we have to go back to June at Churchill Downs to find his last victory. A lot of good races, though. Like you said, the, those two races in Southern California got beaten less than a length combined, and he was coming and running against good horses. I cannot throw out the five web slinger, but there you see the time form U.S. pace projector, and out of 12 early, web slinger is projected to be 12th, Matt, so it could be a tough time getting there, but web slinger, a horse I certainly like. Another horse who's interesting and another horse who should be rallying is in the Irish bred King Max, a son of Kingman. He ran a lot of races over in England, but Four races in the north of, in North America, the three on turf are, are quite good. Yeah, uh, five year old for Jorge Delgado. He was second in that, uh, beaten by just a head in that Fort Lauderdale, and had a couple of allowance wins this summer at Monmouth Park. Those allowance wins at Monmouth Park on the turf were impressive. Uh, looking at the time form U.S. pace projector, no fast pace, kind of a a moderate fair pace that they're, they're projecting and they have uh, th three horses uh, up near or on the lead. Two of them we talked about already, Atone, Jerry the Nipper. They're not real, real speed horses. Maybe the 11, we'll talk about him in a bit, gets the lead, but it should be a pretty fair pace, I'd say in here, Matt. Yeah. All right, let's get to the number seven. That's another Chad Brown runner. At Hamo is a horse I thought could be very good yeah, he is a grade one winner in America, but I don't know. This horse has just disappointed me more times than I'd care to admit. And I, at Hamo coming out of the Breeders' Cup turf last time where he didn't do a whole lot, hard to get excited. I, I can't completely throw him out, Matt, but uh, at Hamo has been a horse who loses too much. Yeah, and, and, uh, and another horse that I think I'm going to have to say, okay, uh, no more for me. I know I've picked him on top uh, a couple of times, won the United Nations grade one at Monmouth Park uh, in 2022. Yeah, 0 for 3 last year. Uh, Brown has done good things with classy horses before, but uh, I can't bet him in here. Number eight is Masterpiece. Masterpiece is a pretty interesting horse, and you see that on the mo morning line. He's actually the third choice in this big field, giving uh, the son of Master Craftsman a lot of respect, Matt. He's uh, he's in a Dutro barn these days. He is. He uh, uh, is in the barn of Rick Dutro. Uh, um, was 10th in the Arlington Million, 7th in this race last year, but woke up with a nice victory in the Red Smith, a grade two. Yeah, uh, and he won a grade two two years ago in the Eddie Reed. So he, he won a grade two in each of the last two years. On his best, he is a threat. On her best, she's a big threat. That's the nine warm heart, Matt. Ryan Moore coming in to ride for Aiden O'Brien. And warm heart was a really, really good three-year-old filly in Europe last year. In fact, she won a couple of big group one races over there. Uh, she's been traveling since. It started with the Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf. Yeah, been traveling all over the world. Uh, uh, racing in England, in France. Second in the Breeders' Cup filly and mare turf uh and then was over in hong kong and finished third in one of their big races the hong kong boss yeah he she ran a big race that was against the males of course and that was at a mile and a half and she she made her move she got the lead and uh, I, I thought ran very well even though she was clearly third best in the hong kong boss uh, but another good performance. Now she drops down to nine furlongs. Could be a good thing. We'll, we'll see. In the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf, if she runs back to the race she ran there, I think she will be tough to beat because she looked like a winner in the stretch of the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf uh, out in Southern California and it took a huge, huge effort to run her down late. 
warm heart, a deserving favorite on class in this Pegasus World Cup turf. Number 10, another horse you just can't throw out, Matt. Sheryl Spate, Sheryl Spate uh, was a grade one winner at Keeneland a few years ago. He he hasn't found the winner circle a lot lately, but uh, he, he's run a lot of good races. He was second in the Breeders' Cup mile uh, two years ago, and even, even last year's mile, he was beaten less than three lengths. Yeah, and throw in a second in the Woodbine Mile a little bit more recently. Uh, but this horse we're talking about is a seven-year-old. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I don't mind that. He's trained by the Canadian Master Roger Outfield. Uh, maybe best at a mile. Maybe nine furlongs uh, is the longest he would want to go. But uh, another horse who could sneak in. Number eleven is main event. We talked about the Fort Lauderdale with a couple horses in here. Main event is actually the horse who won it. Uh, main event is trained by George Weaver, Matt, as we saw from the time form of the U.S. Pace Projector. He's got some speed. He's won two in a row. Yeah, two in a row and has got some speed in a race where it's not projected to be too fast. I guess this one, this five-year-old, could get uh, loose on the lead, won that Fort Lauderdale, again, as we have mentioned, with, against a couple horses in this field. Uh, and has an allowance win, uh, seems to be in the best form uh, of his life right now. Yeah, I, I prefer Jerry the Nipper out of that race, uh, and maybe I prefer King Max out of that race. But, yeah, if he does get loose on the lead, he becomes very dangerous. I don't think he won't, will get loose on the lead. I hope he doesn't get loose on the lead coming out of the 11 hole. There's some decent speed down on the inside for him to deal with. But another which you can't throw out, nor can you throw out the 12, Matt. Catnip, Catnip is a son of Kit. Kitten's Joy, a five-year-old, he's been freshened for trainer Mike Stidham, and he was showing some real ability on the grass uh, last summer at Monmouth Park. Yes, especially at Monmouth Park, where he won uh, a grade three in preparation for the United Nations, where he finished second. Yeah, I ran a good race, made a, made a nice move in that grade one uh, United Nations um, after winning three in a row uh got caught late but that was at a mile and a half i think the drop down in distance is good he got a freshening after a disappointment in the arlington million last time but i think stidham will have him ready and an interesting horse who can come from middle of the pack or maybe a little farther or a little closer pretty versatile horse frankie detori will be up two also eligibles in the breeders in the pegasus world cup turf and if either one of them got in, Matt, I would give them a shot to get in the exotics. Grand Sonata and Anglophile are not are not bums by any means. Yeah, that's for sure. So we've got uh, uh, some tough choices to make coming up now. Yeah, that's right. Let's get to our top picks, Matt. Hey, how about you go first as usual, Mister will... Pick Five King? I will. I will do that, Brian. Let's go back to the dirt to the Pegasus World Cup. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, it, it's kind of uh, the usual suspect for me in there. And so I am going to take a shot with a horse that is a little bit more lightly raced, hoping that he makes the step forward for Brad Cox. Cox can do that with these talented horses. First mission for me. I think you're on the second choice there, Matt. I think you're on a horse who could win. Uh, I, I'm looking for a little bit more odds. I guess I'm on the third choice or the co third choice. My horse is O'Connor. I, I look at that fast pace, that scrum into the uh, short first turn, and I think a horse can rally. I think O'Connor is getting better and better. Uh, Gulfstream Park's a, a place he's won more than once. Uh, O'Connor, for me, as a mild upsetter in the Pegasus World Cup, tur uh, Pegasus World Cup, in the Pegasus World Cup turf, I think you're on the second choice again. Yeah, and, and uh, in the turf, I am going to go with integration uh, again, uh, uh, looking for the fresh face. And this is some talented fresh pace. I'll tell you, Brian, I'd be very happy if I got three to one. Yeah, integration has the kind of turn of foot that you like to see out of, dare I say, great turf horses. Integration could be that good. He certainly could win this. Uh, having said that, he only raced against three year olds. He's only raced against three uh, three races in his life. Tough spot for an inexperienced horse in a big field to uh, to beat them all. I'm going to try to beat him. 
warm heart. She's gone from England to Ireland to England to France to Southern California to Hong Kong to Gulf Stream. She's dropping to nine for a long. She is, she is a really, really, really good mare, and I could easily see her winning two deserving favorites in here. But I think they both have some vulnerabilities, and I like Catnip. I like the way Catnip was running last year. I think the freshening will do him good. I'm hoping Detori can work some magic and, and, and get a good trip from the 12th hole. So I'm going bombs away. I'm going with a bomber in the Pegasus World Cup turf, and that's Catnip for me, Matt. All right, folks, that's our show, the Pegasus World Cup. Of course, we didn't even talk about the Pegasus World Cup Philly and Mare turf. Four other graded stakes besides that. So it's just a wonderful card. Don't forget about Super Screener uh, giving you uh, information on the whole card at Gulfstream Park as well as on the road to the Derby. Matt, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Boy, lots of action down there in Florida. I, I, I wish I was down there. I could use a little bit of warm weather, but good luck to all of you if you're wagering uh, on the Gulfstream card. And as always, thanks for watching the show. We appreciate watching every week. If you haven't turned on the notifications, if you haven't subscribed yet to our YouTube channel, do that first. Turn on the notifications. Leave us a comment. We love it. Big day at Gulfstream Park coming up. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. Of course, Time Form US for their great pace projections. Folks, good luck. Big day of racing in, in South Florida. We hope that you win, and we hope that maybe Matt and I, uh, you enjoyed the show, and maybe we helped you out a little bit, cash some nice tickets. Next week, we'll be back on the Kentucky Derby Trail right here on Horse Center. Until then, have a great week. We'll see you soon.